Welcome to This Week in Hearing. My name is Amin Amlani, and I have the privilege of serving as your host. For today's webcast, I have the privilege of having discussions with two notable and well-respected international colleagues as we consider hearing products, traditional and evolving changes in service delivery, and consumer perception and experiences as they seek to improve their quality of life. Please welcome Jeff Cooling and Steve Claridge, they're co-founders of HearingAidKnown.com and Audiology Engine. They're both writers and hearing care bloggers. So welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for Thank having you. Us so, Steve, you're the first one on my screen here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Uh, yeah, so I've been wearing hearing aids since, uh, since I was about uh, mid-teens. Uh, my parents first noticed I had a hearing loss when I was about five, uh, took me to a local hospital, Got some really big, bulky uh, analog aids, which were horrible and whistly and not good. Uh, but it wasn't until I was about sort of late teens, mid twenties, where my hearing progressively got worse to the point where I realised I couldn't actually get on without them. So up until that point, I was kind of putting off wearing them. But uh, since then, so since I was about twenty up to now, I'm forty-seven. Uh, I've been wearing a lot of different hearing aids in that time. Well, so you have a lot of experience with the products and, and potentially with the patient journey. And, and, when, and I'm very curious to hear as we have these discussions and as things are starting to evolve in the industry, what your perceptions are, because one, you're an insider, but you're also an outsider because you know what's going on, but then you also need the product and the services in order to hear. Yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely an interesting time at the moment. I think, uh, well, we'll talk about it again in a bit, but uh, I think with the changes, the OTC and all that kind of stuff, I think it's a good time for the consumer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, everybody knows Jeff Cooling, you know, you and uh, uh, all your blogs. It's, it's one of the things that I look forward to on a daily basis. And uh, I think I've read almost everything that, uh, that, you've, that you've written. Huge fan, and I'm looking forward to having you on here, Jeff. And so, uh, share a little bit about you uh, for the audience, if you would, please. It's funny. I'm a big fan of your stuff. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> it's like it's like every time I come on with somebody, it's like a love fest. It's like, I love your stuff. I love your stuff. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And I'm really, really a big fan of your stuff in relation to, you know, the economics of hearing. Like, yeah, really, really love it whenever you write an article in relation to it. But so who am I? Uh, fat Irish bloke, very irritating. Been involved with the business since I think 2006. Qualified as a hearing care professional in Ireland. Did a bit of work in the UK and then I worked for uh, Widex as a, basically a, a, a country sales manager uh, for a couple of years. Split with them in 2014 and worked with Steve ever since. So really, I, did the, I suppose I've always been fascinated with the technology, but I've always been fascinated with the psychology of the interaction between the professional and the consumer. As a byproduct of that, I suppose, changing consumer wants and needs. So... Uh, it made sense to get involved with Steve from, from a lot of different points of view and get involved with Hearing Aid Now. So we've been working together now since middle of 2014, Steve. Eh? It's a long time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to him last year or early this year, like, it's seven years. Don't divorce me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. No, you guys have a really, really unique website. I know that you have some books and things on there. There's some really cool content. And uh, if you haven't accessed the website, and we'll put the, we'll put the, uh, the link down here at the bottom when we actually uh, publish the video, um, you know, folks should really, really go out and, and see what you have on there. It's a very unique perspective and one that I respect. And a, a lot of times I agree with you. There's a couple of times I don't agree with you, Jeff, but you're a lot bigger than I am. So you know, we'll, we'll have to wait till I, you've had a few pints and then I'll tell you what I really think. <laughs> I'm a pussycat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, sometimes, I mean, sometimes I have, shall we say, pushed the envelope. <laughs> well, um, well. But some, but more often than not, it's, it's true kind of frustration, to be honest with you. And I think that my 
attitude has evolved as well over the over the period of time that you know that I've been involved with the industry, but also that I've been involved with here and I know. And before I would have said that I was probably an advocate for the independent hearing care profession. But now, to be honest with you, in the last couple of years, it feels like, to be honest with you, I'm more an advocate for uh, people with hearing loss. Um, so, I want you yeah, every hand. Yeah, no, I think it's 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 <laughs> almost it's not quite schizophrenic, but it's um, but yeah, I think I think my attitude has changed slightly, but but yeah, it's been an interesting journey, like really fascinating journey, and it, and again, like Steve. I'm a hearing aid wearer, so there's that kind of thrown into the mix as well as being a professional league. So yeah, no, it's been fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's dive into this. Let's talk about products first, and then we'll move into your comment about patients. And I absolutely agree with you. You know, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat, more or less, um, advocating for the consumer, and, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But let's talk about products. So. Both of you are hearing aid wearers. Both of you have, have seen changes in the industry. My first question is, are hearing aids in 2021 better than they were five to seven years ago? Yes, hugely, yeah. I think it, it all surprises me. So, I mean, through, through hearing aid now, I get quite a lot of uh, trials with different products. So I tend to like wear something for six months or a year and then, you know, so like resale and give me a, a try of the one. So I upgrade and it all surprises me every time I think, so I'm wearing the same here in April year and you sort of get used to that and you think, well, that, that's that's my reality now. That's where hearing aids are at, you know, and, and it's good. You know, like five years ago, I was hearing well, happy with it and thought, well, this is it, you know. But every time a new iteration comes out, uh, I'm constantly, I shouldn't keep being surprised, but I'm constantly surprised about how, you know, it's not huge improvement, improvement each time, but it just gets better and better each time. Um, in just sort of subtle ways. So I recently started wearing Oticon more and I think they've sorted out the wind noise problem, which was always a huge problem for me. So just little things like that. Each time there's a new iteration, it's always improving. So yeah, definitely. I think um, huge, huge difference from five years ago. Um, I tend to, I tend to agree. Like it's, so it's almost like in the last kind of year or two, Hearing aids have almost me met at what we'd call a run sale moment. It does what it says on the tin. <laughs> that was a, that's a famous ad over here, right? So, uh, but you know, it kind of really feels like that. You know, hearing aids have kind of have met this run sale moment where most of the premium hearing aids from most of the manufacturers pretty much can be fit, and if they're fit properly, they will do exceptionally well for a large proportion of patients. Like that's that's how it feels to me. The days of, you know, constant firefighting in relation to patients, in relation to fine tuning and, you know, overcoming problems and delivering solutions feel like they're they're almost gone. Not not gone all the way. We there's still complex cases. There's still some patients who have difficulties, no matter what processing is an issue. But it feels like a large percentage of patients are almost fit well and forget. Now, you know, I'd, <laughs> it's not quite that simple, but, but it feels like it's moving towards that. And even in my own, so I've been wearing here now, it's pretty much solid for a couple of years now, primarily really because of the Frank Lynn evidence in relation to, you know, uh, processing issues, you know, the star of brain, cognitive decline and processing issues. And that's really kind of what freed me into wearing the hearing aids because they have a kind of moderate, high frequency hearing loss. <sighs> Most of the day I can get away without wearing hearing aids if I want to, you know. But by the end of the day, I'm tired, cranky, irritating. <laughs> or at least that's what she tells me. <laughs> <laughs> So if I, apparently if I wear my hearing aids for most of the day, I'm less irritating. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so even I've saw this, or I've seen this um, incremental improvement in relation to what manufacturers are offering. And one of the things I think that, so things stand out for me 
in the development of hearing aids. So for instance, uh, Phonex Marble stands out, okay? Prim primarily because of the connectivity, all right? Uh, Otacon's Open stands out for me. Again, primarily because, uh, you know, it felt for me that Otacon went from not knowing how directionality worked <laughs> to some sort of black magic with directionality. You know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's really how it felt for me, like. Uh, as a as a wearer and all, and as a professional, understanding the underlying technology and you know Starkey's jump towards the expansion of the use case of hearing aid, you know with the with the the kind of the healthable stroke hearable features, all of those things really jump out at me over the last couple of years as as evidence of this you know quite dramatic evolution of of hearing aids into almost something else moving forward. Yeah, you, you I think know, that's still, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Steve. No, go ahead, Steve. I was going to say, you know, I think there's still going to there's still going to be those incremental improvements year on year. But I think, you know, when we go on to talk about um, you know disruption in the hearing aid industry and where things need to improve, I don't think it's a technology problem. I think it's well, you know, as I say, it's going to get better, but they're already fantastic. I don't think it's a technology problem. Uh, it's just a service problem, I think. Like, That's I interesting. Think, sorry, I think, Steve, though, as well, though, right? So so for me and you, right, we get on really well, and you're getting on exceptionally well with the with the Otacon more, right? But I think that we, we, me and you, have to be careful about not letting us, not letting that blind us to the fact that some people don't, right? And, and as well as that, so... I mean, where, where do you meld Amelda Marcuses of hearing aids? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the closet's full of them, huh? Yeah, like, you know, like hmm, well, I wear the black ones today. <laughs> <laughs> manufacturers just throw them at us, right? And and that's that's fine, right? But we and one of the things that we we are lucky enough to have available to us is. The top level of technology whenever we're testing stuff whenever we're wearing stuff we're always wearing the top level of technology you know because that's what the manufacturer wants us to to really understand and to review um and in fairness to the manufacturers they know that you know our reviews are honest and if we didn't like it we'd say so i mean it's brave enough for them to to hand over to the devices as well, if you if you consider it in that light. But but again, sorry, what I was saying was that you know me and Steve are quite lucky in that we have access to basically the best technology from the best traditional manufacturers out there, and there are people who don't have that access. But on top of that, as a as a professional, I see some with that technology who suffer quite badly, you know? So my my QuickSense guard is really low. I don't know what Steve's QuickSense guard is, but I'd imagine it's actually quite low. So our ability to process speech and noise is relatively good. So when we get support from top level technology, we do exceptionally well. But like, I still see some patients with QuickSense guards of 15 and 20 even. And you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, <laughs> Your stomach drops because you know that no matter how much they spend on the hearing aids, it's not gonna deliver. You know what I mean? So, so do I you think that's fixable free technology? Though, do you think that technology is going to improve so that that is you know workable? I think as as our understanding of how the brain works in a in a in a better way in relation to processing, right? And uh, how hearing aids move down the route of uh, artificial intelligence and how that's applied to what the hearing aids are doing. I do think there will be improvements in that. As well as that, I think that improvements in battery, improvements in innovation within uh, microphones, et cetera, et cetera, will allow for smaller, cheaper ancillary devices that are easier to use and probably are more versatile than what's available right now. And a, a combination of all of that should start to really uh, eat into those, into the, the people who have problems, who have issues with speech and noise, who have issues with that process. But yeah, like I said, we're lucky. You know, we have a hearing loss. 
good technology overcomes that hearing loss and our brains can handle the process of more or less, right? Yeah. Uh, for people who, who can't, there's still room for uh, greater innovation and technology moving forward. But I think that, that concept feeds into what Steve is talking about as well, because for us, for people like me and Steve, you give us good technology, okay? And we'll just get on. We'll get on really well, okay? If it's well fitted, we don't necessarily need the ongoing input from the professional. And, and I think that's one of the things that, that myself and Steve have discussed on many occasions, right? And, and I can understand it from Steve's point of view, and I can understand it from my point of view as a consumer if I wasn't involved in the profession, right? We don't need five years of aftercare. <laughs> All we need is decent technology that's fitted well, and then we'll probably just get on with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, yeah. that's, I think that's one of the things that has driven that consumer awareness and that I was changing consumer wants and needs that we were discussing earlier. Earlier, I think that the one size fits all approach to business model is has kind of uh, it's it's just it's not really going to work moving forward. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and and so let me let me um, I'm going to back up just a little bit based on a comment. So you and Steve are wearing premium products. Let me ask this question first, and then you'll see where I go with this. Have you tried any of the lower tiered products within the same manufacturer? So instead of the, the level nine, for example, are you down at the level one or the three? And can you tell the difference between the one and the three and the seven and the nines? Um, not recently, to be honest. No, no, I've been on sort of top level for a, for a while. But uh, in the past, I have done there. I think it's quite... Um, it's quite an interesting um, thing. So, the years back, uh, I was looking to buy a new um, ITC, and uh, I was in there and I had the hearing test. Uh, you know, and the, and the audience said, "Right, okay, well, you can have this one that's you know three thousand. You can have this one that's two thousand. And I said, so I was sort of saying, "Well, you know, wh where's my? Where, how much am I benefit am I going to get from my my thousand pets? And it wasn't. It couldn't really. It, all he said was, "Just go away and try it." Kind of thing. There was no you couldn't really quantify, you know, the benefits between, a, like, a, like you say, a level nine and a level five. It wasn't really a, so, you know, for me trying making a decision how much money to lay on the table, there was no sort of clear guidance really other than go away for a month and try the, try the level nine and go away for another month and try the five and see, see if you think it's worth, um, worth the difference. But no, no, I haven't, I haven't worn uh, lower tiers of length. So when the manufacturer sends the stuff to me, it tends to be the trial version, okay? Same with Steve, right? But as, as you're probably aware, the trial versions now can be set to different technology. Yep. Yeah. Right? So in the past, okay, what I've done is I have set them to different levels of technology, okay? Primarily to understand the sound quality not necessarily the efficacy in different situations, okay? So, so to answer your question, <laughs> recently I haven't, but in the past I have, okay? And what I've found, what I've found is that my ability to process speech and noise seems to be pretty good. So even if I have, you know, a bare bones aid that has automatic directionality I get on relatively okay and that's one of the things that I kind of realized that a while ago and it's one of the things that I kind of whenever I'm doing a review I try to remember to, to emphasize that when I'm reviewing the product that actually I get on relatively well in speech and noise with yeah. hearing so but yeah I mean there is there is differences uh, in technology, we, we both know that. And um, how I try to, so in my professional, well, what I try to do is I base the technology level that I might recommend on the uh, understanding of our ability to process speech and noise 
and occasionally then they're doing speech discrimination. So those two, uh, we'll say numbers, uh, help me to better recommend the devices that might be suitable for them. And again, I don't know how how most other people work. It, it seems that it seems that in the UK, maybe in Ireland, there's a although it's got better, it has changed. There are more dispensers who who don't really, or they may understand the technology, but they find it difficult to quantify the real world benefits to the the consumer. And that's something that actually we haven't explored, Steve. Thinking about it, we haven't explored that. Maybe that's something that we should explore in relation. Yeah, to, yeah no, like, because, you know, in fairness, we're usually talking about top of the range stuff. We don't make any bones about that or we, we don't hide it in any way. But yeah, maybe that's something that we should explore. Actually. Well, and, and, and the reason that I brought it up is exactly where you're going with this is if the top end is really that good and the bottom end is not that good, which is what we would expect because it's a lower number. But now you have direct-to-consumer products like Bose and New Hera, and you have all these other items that are coming in that cost a lot less. Okay, now they don't have the customer service and we'll talk about you know, customer service in just a minute that Steve brought up. But how then will the market look if these direct-to-consumer markets are just as good as these lower-end products, but maybe not as good as this top-end product. What is that going to do for the market in the future? And if you're going to make these comparisons, it would be really interesting to find out what are the differences between these products, if there are any. We, we, we did, um, so we, we, I've tried Ergo in the past. I tried the original Ergo. Then I got a go at the Ergo, I think, Neo. And they were basically unprogrammed devices just you know three uh programs that suited three different kind of average losses uh, so that was them more recently i've tried new hair with the hair id i've tried the alango technologies where in here and and both of those offer self-fitting self-fitting customization and both of those in their different guises because they've upgraded them several times delivered a relatively decent ability to hear. Again, you know, maybe I'm not the best subject because if I have even semi-decent directional microphones, shove me in a noisy environment and I get on relatively okay. And I did with the new Hera and I did with the uh, wear and hair. Now, those devices are situational devices. You could right. wear them off, right? Or at least you could. I have real problems with occlusion. It drives me insane. <laughs> <laughs> I get all, and I want to fight people and stuff. <laughs> so, so yeah, so there's situational devices at best, right? However, uh, like I've even tried that MD here and stuff, right? And you know, it's a basic hearing aids. You know, for the price of it, uh, sound quality was all right. You know, it wasn't great. wasn't quite fantastic by any means. It offered a kind of older technology directional mics, and they kind of did what they said in the tin. 